Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Open Active Community Call today. Um, as usual, if you haven't already, please uh, sign up to the W3C Community Group. It's a slightly arduous process, but it does help um, us keep in touch with everyone. Um, today's call could be a short one because it's mainly some updates, uh, but we may we may start some discussions. We'll see. Uh, so, update on the data quality metrics and an update on the fast track process for managing the activity list, which we've been working through here. Quick conversation about facility types list, um, and then we can scan through the um, the other topics which we'd kind of sketched out for the year um, and see if there's any that we want to, to prioritize. So just jump straight in. Um, I sent the link to this in this general channel on the Slack, but I will, um, and there will be a link in the slides for anyone who's watching later. So, <clears throat> I'll just give a moment. Have you got that link? And is it opening up okay for people? I'm glad you, you've got it, Andrew, but uh, your ODI, so I, I might have expected you to. Is anyone else external? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I opened up for. One. Yeah, brilliant. Um, okay, so just quickly walk through what's what we've got here. So it's starting to produce some feed level data quality summaries based on the, the set of measures that we identified for Christmas um, as being most pertinent to the discovery use case. So what someone needs to, to see in an activity finder to, to kind of provide a positive experience. So, um, so I've started to calculate those at a feed level and so here we've got the organizer and then the type of feed. So it's mostly session series and scheduled sessions right now. Uh, there's some courses and events in there, but I'm moving now on to the facility stuff. So this should flesh out. I just wanted to test the principles on, on these. And so there's a quick count of all the opportunities that are currently live, shall we say in the data. So the status is, not deleted so that's a count uh, and the summary the total is over eight hundred thousand. so out of 40 odd feeds so um some, some big numbers going out but i would add a caveat that not all of those opportunities are, are valid really because some of them are in the past so when we think of the activity finder kind of use case um they're looking for activities they can book book on for in the coming weeks so We've got to manage that uh, slightly. And then we've got the, the metrics. So these are percentages um, across the way now. So this does the activity ID in the API feed match the official open active activity list? And the benefit of that is that it allows people to group things properly and display them and make the necessary connections links to facility types, all sorts of reasons why it's a good idea. Um, so there are some instances where it, it doesn't match. And sometimes it looks like they've got a completely different formatting for the for the ID. Um, but obviously that makes it difficult for the uh, activity finder creators to, to match things. So for example, they may they may not miss they may have missed off the HTTP openactive.io vocabulary or whatever it comes to you know so if they haven't got the full URL for that ID it won't work. <clears throat> so that's that one. Um, then we have does the session have a name? And I put a few extra checks in there to check that the name isn't just an empty string and that it's um, you know not not a nonsense name. So it's reassuring to see that most of them do. Does it have a description? And the column G is basically, this is the what of the activity, of the opportunity. You know, does it either it has a matching ID, activity ID, it has a name or it has a description. Because um, you really need one of those three things to be able to, to say, you know what's going on. Choose if it's for you. 
So that is um, been sent in the Slack channel on W3C chat. Sorry, is, have people not got this sheet? Somebody's not on mute, I think. I don't know who's. Um, I, do, I have put it in the conversation. <laughs> Sorry, guys, that, that's the Brigham here is twice now as well. Apologies, we'll go on mute. Thank you. I should have said to everyone to go on mute. Um, Has everyone got a link to this document? Was that was that one of the questions? Because I, I put it in the chat. But... If you could put it in the chat again, that would be so helpful. Sorry, uh, we've been uh, delayed. Yeah, if people don't join. Thank you. I missed that. So it's there now. Um, yeah, so this is the what of the activity. Um, and then I've got the column page, which is the where. So we want to, it either has a postcode or latitude, longitude, geospatial coordinates. Um, obviously that's essential for the end user to know to know where where it will be, but also in the kind of creation of activity finders to display things on maps and, and do that location search and all those kind of things. So um, in this report, I haven't validated any postcodes, so um, that's something, and I haven't validated the Latin long coordinates either. So it's simply they, they exist in the data at this stage. Um, I mentioned before of those 800,000 opportunities, not all of them are valid really in, in that they have dates in the past. So this is a percentage that shows how many of the 14,000 opportunities in this feed have a date in the future. So they could be displayed in Activity Finder and someone could say, okay, next Tuesday, I want to go on that activity. So, and I think, you know, all the idea is that all of these percentages should be the higher, the better, you know, so 100% is, is perfect. Um, and so we've got some quite, quite low figures there. So that's something to, to explore whether the feeds are, they haven't implemented the kind of cutoff, which, which stops uh, sharing old information in the API feeds, or um, perhaps they haven't implemented the the update delete kind of status thing correctly. So, some things to explore there, and maybe that's something Chris um, we can discuss, and you can make some calls. Maybe start exploring that with people. And then this final one is. A kind of proxy for whether booking's enabled. It's it states whether it's a percentage of whether or not the record has a unique URL, which is a kind of proxy for um, that click through capability to click through from the instance or the session to to the booking page. Um, so it's it's a kind of quick and dirty measure of that. Can I ask a clarification question on that one, Howard? Yes. So on this row, this first row here, none of the sessions have a unique URL. Yeah. So might that particular provider just be providing a URL to their website. Which that's be. that's probably that's probably exactly what it is. Yeah. And you know, for some of the, um, you know, not everyone's got booking enabled. Not everyone is um, at that stage. And some of the some of the feeds are. Like listings, if you like, they um, they say what's available, but they don't necessarily let you click right through. So we, we wouldn't expect that. As a, it's a bit of a crude measure of um, of the of the kind of readiness for booking. It might be useful alongside that measure to have some sort of measure of the number of activities that have a kind of generic link. I don't know how viable that would be. Okay, I, I mean, um, yeah, most of them will have a generic link within the feed itself, but there is a specific box, if you like, for the unique URL for a session. Um, and it's at that point we'd hope to see something unique or a template. It could be that you know, as long as the feed is providing instructions to create a unique URL, and that's sometimes how it's done. Um, 
it's so helpful yeah. and uh, andrew the uh the url is a mandatory field uh in 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 the some some url being present as a mandatory field, okay so cool that, that might be captured by it being valid uh, i will ask silly questions because i'm completely new to this still no 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 good to get to ask the question well, right. and I said I would introduce you, but I didn't. So let's uh, <laughs> let's let's do that. <laughs> Welcome to Andrew Newman uh, with Jasan. <laughs> uh, um, so I'm I'm Andrew. Um, I work at the ODI as a principal data specialist, um, and I'm overseeing Open Active for ODI. Um, uh, so I think I'm going to pick up chairing this group in the future, um, which will enable Howard to become the the technical expert from ODI uh, in the call. Um, and he won't have to worry about chairing the meetings. He can just go on with being clever. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, okay. Um, I've got a personal concern, just if I can ask. ask. Um, yeah, yeah. It's just about the everyone active numbers, um, where it says scheduled session and session has a name is one. I'm not sure that's right. Um, okay, so that is scheduled session. Session. We're certainly passing the details through in the um, yeah. in the open data. Yeah, I can see that betters are quite low as well, and I'd I'd be concerned that that won't be correct either. I don't know. Which one? Somebody sorry. Tell me if uh, better at the top. Okay. Better yeah, but before. both are passing the validator, and the session is a um, required field, and the session names required field. So I'd I'd be very surprised if there were yeah. no, no names. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what I've done. I lost everything. So um, I. Except, you know, and uh, I'll, I'll add no caveats around this. This is a uh, work in progress kind of reporting um, method routine. So the code's still being developed. Let me um, explore that. I did just go through these, um, but maybe, you know, and I kind of went through them quite with a fine tooth comb, but maybe I stopped at number three or something and. Uh, and then kind of just kicked it off. So let me explore those. Um, yeah, so just, I'm pleased, you know, for please just do do let me know if there's anything that looks off because you can focus my attentions on those. I'd, I'd question the sessions has a date in the future for us as well. Um, just because the data that we're sending is all valid. So live sessions that are taking place now. So I don't know why that would only be at 45% unless there is some difference between where you've got a facility and a um, event. Um, you, you may not be returning sessions for a facility because that's different to an event. Yeah, well, let me let me get some examples, um, Debbie, and then you know something around the name and something around those dates, and I'll share those with you because I think that's you know the, the, that's how I'll my next step. You know, if you raise a concern here, you, you think it looks wrong, I'll dig into it and get some some examples. But that link to facilities, so that we, we haven't um, you know I haven't moved on to the facility types, uh, facility uses, and slots feeds yet. Well, I've started bringing them together but i haven't they're not in this this kind of stage okay and the 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 url um i think i'm on the same page as what andy's put into the chat is um i'd want to understand from our perspective where we're expected to store that for it to come into the feed and it's probably a conversation between myself and andy and nick maybe from the gladstone interface perspective but we're not we're not enabled bookings, but I think you were saying that we could have a, a generic URL in there. It is, there is an extension within OWS that allows you to do that. It would just require some customization because it's not a standard feature of OWS. So that, that might yeah. be what is not turned yeah, on. I think, I think yeah, sorry, I, I put a message directly to Debbie just between okay. the two of us. Uh, but, oh, uh, sorry, Andy, oh, hello. No, 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 no that's absolutely fine because it was just something that was mulling in my mind before I was asking to ask the question, but thanks, Debbie. Um, the um, yeah, my, yeah. My sort of query was there, Nick. Is that at the moment the, the way we, we've been looking at it is that we're obviously doing an integration with the broker who will be consuming the pages. So therefore, the the book API aspect then would be an integration from 
the broker, so I'm not sure whether or how technically we'd be able to pick up the, the booking URL in the open data. But that's maybe, as I say, a discussion between ourselves. Uh, so this is talking about, I believe there's a, um, a URL that we can create that goes straight to the everyone active. Oh no, 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 sorry, totally right, because that's members only, isn't it? You just be hit with the, with the member login link. Yeah, you're right, yeah, separate that, conversation. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that integration is directly with the broker and the broker is responsible for the booking aspect. Yeah, there isn't, there isn't a, um, a page on Everon Active's website per activity that is for guests. You have to be a member yeah. to see those pages and that's why it does, the URL doesn't make sense. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Phew. Thanks. But could we just have a generic URL in there that at least points the user to our website? I think there's already the URL of the will center. Be. Yeah, I think that is the case. And so you you currently have the center. You, I think I think you've got a in your places in AWS. You can put a URL for the site. We have. Yeah, we have. They're all if not, completed. yeah. They're all completed. We... So why? Yeah. That means it's not being pulled through to that field there then to, to your account that's not being included in your account uh, yeah it, it could be that it's, it, it could be that debbie that's maybe something we've done but we've not actually rolled it out at this moment in time because of the, the way we are with the project at the minute i think it i think it is in there actually andy i think i think the uh, places url is in there yeah yeah i think just it, it might not be in howard's um well figures yet possibly possibly uh, uh, how it's possible. Possible. this is working progress <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I think what also I'm looking for, are you saying that's a generic URL? A generic URL in the place. Okay, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, so this is specifically looking for unique combinations in the URL for the session. So I think what you, I wouldn't expect one from what you've said there. I think if it doesn't go through to a um, specific page for, sure. for non members, um, you know, so that. I wouldn't expect that to to be as high, but see, this was this this is a draft kind of measure until we dig into what's a better measure for for the book of, bookable side of things. It might be that there is a, you know, and we we already have some indications of which feeds are bookable. We just want to need to make it a little bit more a little bit more obvious, perhaps on the status page. So, a um, couple of couple of things there for me to to uh, explore and I'll come back to you, Debbie, via email, if that's okay. Yep, uh, okay, thank you. <clears throat> Howard, do you mind if I ask the list of um, providers that um, you've got in this uh, data set, so Angus Live down to run together, is yeah. that a, just a random list of um, organizations that have opened their data or is that the definitive list? The, this comes from, um, the status page is, is kind of the start point. And I have looked mostly at session, uh, sorry, scheduled sessions and where appropriate, I've pulled in the relevant data from session series to get, for example, the activity data. Um, so if you scan down that, uh, most of those uh, session style feeds are included there in the data. So Alan Park, for example, and so I just remind me where to get that list from, the one you just had on the screen. So that is status.openactive.io. Okay. And that is, as it says at the top, this is a slightly, it's it's a bit vintage. It's around from the early days of Open Active, but um, it's been revamped recently to include all <clears throat> the feeds that are live according to the data catalog. Uh, which is where we kind of start from the data catalog lists, data catalogs for um, Gladstone, for Legend, and another one, and then all the other ones. And the GLL catalog that is in that, uh, is linked to from there. Um, and then from each individual catalog, you go to the data set sites, and from the data set sites, we can pull back. So this is ex an example of a data set site. So each feed has, or each publisher has one of these pages, yeah. and then these are the actual endpoint yeah. that we get the data from. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, I haven't seen the previous page, so thank you. That's useful to understand. It is in the process. The, the issue, of, sorry, go. On. 
the issues column um those appear to be issues that have that are older probably resolved so I, i've yeah. opened the one on ours and it looks like it's from 2018 so i'm just wondering yeah. whether it's relevant to still show that as an issue that's true well we are started a piece of work with chris um to kind of Get on top of the issues. So if, if there's an old issue there that's been that it's no longer live you know, or it's been completed, the work's been done or whatever, it's no longer a problem, please close it off. Um, and we're, we're trying to kind of focus in on that. So I know there is already an issue in this in these counts that not all of the so if I click on that one, for example, it takes you to a GitHub page specifically for that feed. Um and if people spot an issue with a feed they can raise an issue here and the publishers or whoever can can kind of look into it so it's one way to kind of feedback data quality issues um but as i say there are some there are a lot of old issues on there so we're trying to work out what's the best way to to do that we still think the github pages are probably a github page for each repo uh, each feed rather is still the best way to to log little niggles that you find in the data or, or you know serious issues that you find in the data because uh, it gives like a central place for people to to comment and feedback and people who've know the problem can maybe able to comment we kind of get that community spirit going and help to try and help get get the data improved and get the data out there so not all of those uh sorry just to go back to Stephen's question not all of those session feeds have gone have, have come through yet to the to the report so um i'll have to check why why the why this one i think because i looked for alan park unless it's, or it's bedford borough council i wonder if it's come through under bedford because um, i would i might have expected to see alan park there as the as the publisher i i think there might be an issue with the column a and the spreadsheet because it seems to be pulling through organizers from the feeds rather than the feeds themselves so for example team up is a publisher but you're quite for some right. reason the team up feeds here seem to include yoga local and carries poll and aerial ltd as organizer you're right and i know exactly how that's happened so um I took a shortcut there in the last kind of two hours to get this ready for today uh, to feed through the the organizer name and I see what I've done. I've kind of taken the first entry um, for an activity from a feed and of course there can be there may be more than one. So well spotted and thank you Nick. Um, no problem um, and just to uh, sorry just to jump back to um, uh, Debbie's uh, point there. Um, I'm not sure if you were aware, Debbie, but you can log into GitHub. Um, I believe you have access to that to close the issues that are no longer relevant. Um, so if you if you wanted to do that just in your where you can see those issues there that are old, just sign in in the corner um, with your username. And if you can't remember your password, you're going to reset it. And then you can just click on the issue and click close if it's been dealt with. Yeah, I'll double check it, Nick. Thanks. No, we really appreciate it. Um, and you know, that's the kind of message we're going to try and try and share that if people um can close off the ones that are, are already resolved it'll help chris hone in on on where he can he can help um i'll just on this open active status page the proposal once we find out all the um glitches and you know and and we have confidence in the kind of data quality metrics that we've got there the proposal would be that we we're going to revise this this tool anyway, um, but the proposal would be that we start to display the data quality metrics in a more prominent way, perhaps linked to from this page, or you know, so or maybe you know you hover over a feed and it it gives you the summary of the the data quality metrics or something like that. Uh, so that's just the proposal at the moment that we would we would use a very an update to this page as an opportunity to share the data quality results. I don't know if anyone has any thoughts on that. No, I think that'd be a good idea. I'd welcome that. 
Excellent. Okay, I will go back to the. Uh, so, wanted, but quick, but, sorry, go on. I just wondered, Howard. So, we've talked a bit about some of the content in those columns. Are those columns useful to people? And is there anything people would like to see that isn't already in that spreadsheet? Well, I was giving people a pause there to answer, but we went through a process before Christmas, uh, Andrew, to to kind of arrive at those at those measures. Okay. Um, they're not. They are draft. Uh, you know, and they're based. They were kind of the headline figures for the discovery use case. Uh, but the process we've got now that we've got some measures is to get that kind of reporting process going. Um, okay. And once we've got that going, we'll start to look at expanding or refining those measures, but then also moving on to other use cases. Um, so let's say if it was discoverability specifically for the disabled audience or participants, um, they are, there are a different set of things that they really need to see in the feeds to be able to decide if that activity is right for them. So that's, you know, we, we might move on to start capturing or measuring how well those adaptations and accessibility kind of adaptations are, are reflected in the data feeds. And that might come from open active data feeds or it might be drawn in from active places yet, you know? So that's that's the plan. We've got this set of measures. We, we're gonna, gonna get this reporting process up and running. And in time, we'll, we'll look to explore other measures to, to meet other use cases. Great, thank you. Did you say, I think previously on the call, on a call, Howard, we talked about this idea of getting other data users feedback on maybe folks like MCR Active or or other on um, what what they care about to make sure that we're kind of considering. Because I, I know this group, um, I think we might on this call be the only data user side representative, representative Siv and I on the I'm inside. So it'd be good to get a broader view on on that. I mean, especially as a lot of the things that are in the data quality metrics right now are required fields. Um, so, you know, whether that's sufficient because they're things we're already asking for or whether, um, you know, things other than that might be helpful. Absolutely. Um, I think, absolutely. We, you know, we're basically just as well as define those metrics, we're trying to define that process to, to do the reporting. And I think that's been my, now that I've got an initial set of metrics, that was been my focus, the reporting side of it. So, um, Maybe that's a question for, well, we'll work out, we'll have a conversation internally around how, how we can um, move that forward. And I think my other, my other thought on this, I think you've hinted at this yourself a couple of times, is that in some places you're kind of doing quite a simple count and we probably need to, I think postcode was the example you cited, we probably need to start looking at whether some of the data is actually valid in terms of its content as well so so you know there is one is it any good i think i think it's probably a good good way of thinking about extending this yeah the, a good example for british cycling actually if their feed was included is our understanding is the postcodes and all that long coordinates are often quite far apart we're talking 40 miles apart and so obviously <laughs> it's quite it's quite difficult to know where to turn up if you've got a pin on the map is 40 miles from the postcode you're being given um, it's all right, they'll have bikes with them. What's that? It's a good cycle ride, you say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, they'll have bikes with them, they'll be fine. Yeah, they can just <laughs> get on with it. Um, but that I don't I, we we don't know the, the extent of that issue. We've raised it with them, and I know that's one of the things on their backlog to look at when British cycling do re-engage them. I know they're going to at some point um look at that. So but it, having that up front might be a nice thing. Uh, well, absolutely. I think we'll we'll be looking for shortcuts, you know when we've got an automated reporting of millions of feeds and doing a geospatial analysis on each the distance between postcode centroid and advertised geolocation um could be a bit arduous but we, we can do some example measures you know we can take a sample we can measure that that kind of thing i think that might be the approach take there 
I, I don't know if it, it might be helpful just as a suggested next step there, but certainly we are some of our customers who are front ends. I'm thinking, you know, Tom at Played has probably got Dom on, on our team and others are kind of really in the weeds of where some of the data quality issues are that they see when they're going through feeds and things like that. And so I, I'm not sure if either we have another call like maybe here and we try to make sure those people come along and, and kind of and, and explain to them this is the place you can surface your uh, previous experience and grievance with various, you know, things that haven't been there when they've expected them to be and all the rest of it. Uh, and that might be if they feel that that will help um, improve data quality in the future. Because obviously a lot of this stuff is, you know, issues from the past that are logged in GitHub and, you know, everyone's aware of. But if they get the sense that it might be helpful to people who are putting <coughs> new feeds together, then... Um, yeah, uh, definitely. We can learn that for new feeds, but also to kind of help prioritise you know which of those old issues might still be worth working on because yeah. they can have a, a a big impact potentially on on the end users so the lesson there i think or the kind of one of the things to take from that is that we need to get a broader audience in for these discussions so we'll try and plan ahead um for a and you know a revised data quality or expanded the data quality discussion i would have liked to get these the feed the kind of reporting mechanism out there you know so that's uh, we've got some basic measures that, that we trust uh, and they're out there what can we do better you know what what's going to have a better help for the end user um maybe that is is that the right approach um you know worrying about the the mechanism of the reporting or just having these conversations is what's the best could we do them in parallel it sounds like they might be a bit one's an engagement activity which involves getting the right people to a call and and the, when they come and expressing and the other one sounds like it's kind of more getting the numbers from the feeds in the right places which sounds also very valuable to get to the point where the spreadsheet that we looked at there is you know like say robust um but might be tweaked I mean, I, and changed depending on thoughts i just wonder if the the measures will help you know example kind of measures would help bring it to life for the people having that discussion oh, well, that's um i guess that was my thinking uh, yeah i think i think what we've got today might well be enough for that bringing to life pieces you've seen almost people reacting on this call well, hang on what about this you don't know about that etc um but, but you just maybe it's the audience on the user side that are the people going these are the gaps in my front end user interface that because obviously the data, I say obviously, but the data is good enough for the data publishers because, well, not always, but often, because if Debbie wanted the data to be, to be better, for example, they would have an impetus to make the data better for everyone active use case. But it's it's not the everyone active use case here. It's the, you know, change for life or the NHS or the decathlon or the whatever's where they'll put that same data in a different context. And that's where the gaps become more obvious. Um, and that's probably where it's more interesting to kind of get that that sense of what's missing. Okay. I, th I think the other thing you can think about doing is providing kind of targeted guidance. So I think Howard, you mentioned, you know, activity list match ID matches might just be because the URL is poorly structured. So actually, how does this evidence that you're producing here help us improve the guidance that we're providing? And then how do we go and engage with people to, to politely tell them that they need to be better at following that guidance? Um, and, and I think there's a, 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 I think there's some real potential value out there. Absolutely, there's lots of lessons around um, the documentation, and just highlighting the importance of, of some of these these fields. I think we'll move on. Um, we've got a few more things to cover, but. Uh, the link to that spreadsheet is there and I will be revisiting those figures when I get a chance. Um, okay, so we talked about previously the activity list and we bring in management of that into this group rather than via a separate activity list committee that was um, not meeting very regularly and so we've got a kind of big backlog of 
suggested activities to be added to the list. So I just wanted to talk with uh, Chris walked us through this flowchart kind of process last time. And I just wanted to hone in on this box, which is where a curator of the activity list, which most likely going to be Chris in the ODI, um, receives a proposal and he's going to review the proposal. So we, we've we been thinking through the shared list of questions, which were the current criteria. And we've had a look at creating a, oops, wrong one. Uh, oh no, deleted it. <laughs> oh no. So I had a set of, um, a set of questions that were the kind of fast track flowchart decision tree process. Let's see if I can remember them, which Chris is there on, on hand. So is it a predominantly physical activity? Yes. Is it clearly distinct from an activity that's already on the list? So if it's yes and yes, uh, is it well-defined? Is there a clear definition of it? And if, is it... Yeah, is it uh, recognized or administered by a, a body, for example, a regional or national or international sporting body? Uh, so if it's yes to all of those, then it's in the list. If it's no, so let's say it's, uh, it is distinct from an existing entry, it is well-defined, they provide a good definition, uh, but it's not, we don't find a, a national body, then we ask, is it... Um, an established activity you know is it six people doing it or is it six thousand sixty thousand six hundred thousand um and this the scale of those kind of things will help us decide whether or not if it's already well established then it goes in the list so the the principles of play which um and of course if it's not if it falls foul of any of those then we bring it here for discussion unless it's an obvious no for example it's not a uh, predominantly physical activity, in which case Chris would respond politely. Um, but we want, we had, I had some more pr principles we were discussing this this morning, so I clearly not saved a version of these slides, but um, we want the list to be inclusive. We want it to be a tool to um, engage different activity providers. And the purpose of it is to facilitate search, to make it easy for people to find activities that they might want to go and do nearby. And those are two principles that around getting things on the list, adding to the list. But we want also to, um, I wanted to manage, what is the, my question was, what is the, the problem if the list gets too long? Is that going to have an impact on, on activity? Finders. Does anyone have any thoughts on this? The list gets too long. Uh, sorry, what do you mean by that? Well, I'm saying we, we've let's say roller disco is uh, a suggestion to add to the list. So we've already got roller skating. Is roller skating significantly different, called clearly distinct from roller disco? Maybe it could go on as an alternative label. Um, or if there's a good um, you know, a lot of enthusiasm for it, it could be added to the list. But if we do that again and again and again, and we keep, let's say, Scottish country dancing is a variation of Scottish dance. Do we want to add that onto the list? Um, the, the list could grow and grow and grow. We're at 700 activities now. If it became 7,000, is that going to have a noticeable impact when someone does that search in the um, in a activity finder? It won't affect the um, the what the activity finders we work with generally filtered list anyway. So it, as a front end, but, but the, the, it's a hierarchical tree, and so if you want to be able to search for a specific term, you can do that. That's what the free text searches roller skating will auto complete to roller skating or whatever. Um, but if you want to select from a drop down, you know, provide an experience where you can browse, for example. Generally, people aren't browsing up 700 different items there. They're um, curating it down to, depending on the use case, a subset of those. And they're higher up in the hierarchy. So roller skating is the top level. Roller disco is underneath. So if you search roller skating, you'll probably get roller disco, where you will get roller disco in the results. You'll get everything below that in the tree. 
when you're searching. So adding more detail is, is less of an issue um, because of the way that people are selective in the level of detail that they um, show. And it, it's helpful to tag something as specifically as you can. And the guidance that is generally being given to people who are using the activity list is take the most specific tag and use that for your activity. You don't need to tag everything all the way up the tree. So, the, you don't have, um, there will be no concerns uh, about taking a relaxed, you know, or inclusive attitude to adding things to the list. Um, we went about, I suppose there is a balance though, because that's what I'm wondering. Well, it's where the criteria comes from, I suppose, but if it's the request. Yeah, this is the point of a criteria that you mentioned there, making sure that they have enough, you know, it's it's a legitimate activity because if it's relaxed and inclusive and anyone can just add whatever they've made up, that's where it gets a bit more difficult. So if it's def if it's a defined activity that people are doing and, you know, that there's a um, Wikipedia page for and whatever the other things we want to we want to say are, you know, there's a Wikipedia page is usually quite a good one because to actually get a page on Wikipedia, you need to pass a certain level of uh, that community self polices and you need to have a certain amount of, um, of credibility behind the thing and list certain uh, references and things like that. Um, so something like that as a Wikipedia page and something else um, might be a good way of thinking about it. Yeah, so we had this, um, we're looking for a consistent, one of my principles was a, a consistent approach to, to, to the checks that we carry out. So Wikipedia, looking in Google Trends, things like that. I, you know, the, there is a consistent approach to be followed. Um, so, but from the sound of it, there isn't, you know, a, 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 there is a balance, but there's no immediate concern around increasing the size list. We said in our last one that change the hierarchy is fine. Adding new things is fine. Um, just don't delete anything. You know that that's what would upset the existing implementations. Um, but and I that's just a reason to be a little bit more kind of, you know, not to add add things in haste and then precisely. have to go back on that. Exactly. Mm. Yeah, because they can be deleted. So that was the other reason for for trying to find that balance. Um, I, I guess things can't be deleted, but we can provide guidance in the activity list to, to advise people not to use particular terms moving forwards. So um, we have some duplicate terms just because of grammar and punctuation. So you could you could tag one of those as use this other one instead in, in, in the description or something. So, so gradually over time, the use of terms decreases. And I, I guess we should be able to look at at some at some some point in the future, auditing terms to identify terms that aren't being used, perhaps. We started that process now. Um, by the way, but uh, so Debbie, you got your hand up. Um, yeah, it wasn't related to what Andrew was saying. If you want to finish that point before I think I've, I've move on to me, as far as I got with that thought. <laughs> okay, all right. So, um, it was. I'm just questioning that first criteria of moderate activity. Now, I know that I know it seems bizarre because we're talking about open active, but if you put your client hat on or, or, or like a council hat on from our perspective, um, Nick and Andy will probably understand what I mean. If we're talking about Westminster, they would be looking to use the open data solution to almost replace the operator's booking system and activity finder, um, in which case want more than just moderate activities available. Well, I've got one at the moment, for example, which is health suites and saunas, which is not an option in the activity list. But if we wanted to be able to use this solution for people like Westminster Council, who want to, you know, have all everything available to everybody in their borough via the website, then th there's stuff going to be missing. That's a really good example. Um, health Can I just ask a, a clarification? Yeah, yeah, on that. Is that health suites and saunas, is that a bookable thing 
is that a term that's bookable or is, can you book yes. the sauna you book yeah, health suites and saunas thing. yeah they're booked health like suites. for us they're booked as sessions or like swimming um we're limited to numbers that can go in at any one time and um they're all in in mrm oh i see so your so your activity kind of category if you like is health suites and saunas and underneath that you'll have the i don't know spa experience of this or the jacuzzi and whatever that as the type as the names of the activities well uh, maybe if you broke it down in that way but generally in and the on the ones that, in, the, in the health suite areas on poolside it's all one area that's got steam and sauna and jacuzzis all within it but you can only have a certain number of people in that area at any one time right. so right. for us it's health suite like, well, are they facilities though not activities not really because we did they're bookable so they're not um it's not like a badminton court which is what i view a facility as which is something that's bookable in an open area they are specific se sessions and times that you can book into in the same way you could book for swimming and things like that it's a high volume session isn't it like ice skating it's the it's the you know ice skating slot you're booking a slot on the ice rink so you're booking a space on the ice rink to start at 11 o'clock uh, so it's both the facility in the sense that it's an ice rink but also a session in the sense that you're booking at a time but it's not like a yoga class with an instructor that only happens twice a day uh, when that instructor is available it's is that right yeah. Debbie it's more like every hour yeah and it's the same for us women isn't it like um, the sessions are all bookable it's yeah. a facility because it's a pool but they are sessions that you need to book into yeah high frequency sessions that's the term we were using before yeah, so, so yeah, that makes good sense. Um, I guess the question from an activity list point of view that's bubbling around in my head is, is, is does a session in a sauna count as a physical activity? And, and I think we need to maybe think about that a little bit. I get what you're saying, but just opening it up to that first point that I made, that if we want to be able to use this solution for clients, they're not yeah. going to accept that only certain activities are available to them through the feed yeah. there is multiple activities that take place in a center that are not necessarily an activity one if you go down you know the well-being route as well they're not necessarily physical activities they may be consultation sessions or um, the warm space sort of situation that we're in at the moment um, they're not active sessions but they are sessions and then <clears throat> provide pleasure venues yeah it's really interesting we have been given some thought to the the link with the well-being side of things, so um, the social prescribing, and it might be um, activities like a painting class, you know, which is is it's socialization, it's creative, it's good for well-being. You might meet people, help with loneliness, those kind of things. Uh, it's not a physical activity, and we were we know from our work on open referral about how local authorities want to show those physical and non-physical kind of all the services and activities that are available in one place and there isn't a consistent language for those for those terms we are trying to be consistent have a consistent vocabulary for the, the physical activity side and the really good really good chance one option is that we have we manage the activity stuff and there's another version and we join them together you know or the client joins them together to meet that need you've described debbie um rather than distorting the definitions in the open active side of things i don't know stephen you've got your hand up <clears throat> hang on you're on mute even you're on mute sorry oh He's not on mute. Doesn't look like he's on mute, but yet we can't hear him. I'm not sure what's going on. Hmm. Can I jump in while Stephen sorts the sound out? Yeah, go on, give that, give that a try. So I, I was I, I was just wondering. So in our in our model, our first question is: Is it a predominantly a physical activity? And I wonder if we just need to change the lens a little bit and make that question something like: Is it an activity that is beneficial to physical or mental health? 
um, because then you could bring some of those wider well-being things under, in under that mental health banner. So, you know, sitting in a, a steam room or a sauna and relaxing is good for someone's mental health. So maybe we need to broaden our, our def definition out a little bit to cover physical things that are beneficial for physical and mental health, because then you can get all of those well-being activities into the activity list as well. That, We're taking a slightly, sorry, go, on. go on, Nick. No, please. Let's have your I was going to say there's a different um, lenses are interesting. I have two, two thoughts. The first is if we were to expand the scope of that, my suggestion would be that we do it in a very structured and consultative way, i.e. we don't just kind of add some stuff that seems like well-being in there. We actually go to whoever is the, the, is the authority on well-being. I don't know who that is, but the equivalent of DCMS or sorry, the equivalent of Sports England or whatever, then maybe five or six charities that could do that and say to them, we're going to try and structure a list as an exercise. We're going to add it to the activity list wholesale. We're going to, and we want to iterate it. And we want, you know, there might be five or six versions until everyone's happy with it. And then, then that gets added to the activity list as a thing and, and then scope expanded. If we were to do that, would be my suggestion on that. And, and the second part is um, when we think about activity, I actually think it might be fair enough to include sauna and health suite as recovery. Because I think recovery is quite an important part of physical activity. You know, you go to the gym, you, there's a sauna in the gym, is, it serves a purpose that's not just kind of mental health related. And so I, I think it's probably fair enough to expand the things that leisure operators run generally are related to sport. And, and so I, I think it's probably a good argument to be made for most of the things Debbie's talking about there as as recovery or adjacent in some ways. As long as we're not putting, you know, fish and chips in the cafe in there as a physical activity. Um, but I'm sure I'm sure most of it, do you know what I mean? If there's a facility there, it's it's there for a reason. No, I, I, I'll just jump in, I think, because I'm conscious of time. So, Stephen, did you get your sound sorted? I hope so. Can you hear me loud and clear? Yeah, yeah. You can, yeah. I don't know what happened, so apologies. I just wanted to support Debbie's comment about um, the, the the debate that's going on about the uh, what's traditionally the non-physical activity activities like sauna suite. So I completely support that. But I just wanted to raise a comment uh, before the end about something Nick said in the, about the previous um, the topic of discussion, and then it's about asking the brokers for the, what their view is on the quality of data and the data. Um, I'm just mindful that the, as an operator. We only publish the data generally that, that we actually need to use ourselves um, unless we're compelled to do otherwise. And obviously Nick will know with uh, GLL's MCR Active um, uh, project, we, we publish additional data that we don't actually need ourselves, but we've made it available because that's what's been required by the client. Um, but I wouldn't want to set any unrealistic expectations because um, any, data, any data that's missing, not to say the data quality perhaps, but data that's missing, uh, if it's not there, because then it's because it's not available for us to publish it, um, because the data field either doesn't exist or it's just generally not available. Uh, in which case, then you need to guard against expectations about whether that's a realistic for us to put our time and effort into making it available uh, with our um, software supplier um, against all of the priorities that we have to balance and judge against. So I just wanted to make that comment from an operator's perspective. Have you a specific example in mind, Stephen, around around what's missing, or you know that? Uh, well, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't know yeah, because I I, okay. I don't really know what's missing necessarily. I mean, Nick would know better than I would uh, what's missing. Um, I think we've just about provided everything that our clients requested uh, for our particular project, but um, I I just wanted to call it out. That's all. Understood. Yeah, there's things like, for example, it might be the attendee instructions, which is things that the attendee needs to bring with them. Are something that is not is not necessarily across all the sites if that's not something that is displayed to the gll user who's just attending casually but attendee instructions is something that clients like mcr quite because it's a, it's obviously activating an audience that isn't active knowing that you need to bring a water bottle and don't worry about the tennis racket because it's a beginner session um you know is is important to to, to know so you need to know to you know don't need to call ahead and try and figure out about tennis rackets because it's just provided um, and so that, that type of information, which is is required, may not be on the website. And, and I think part of where this gets interesting is there's probably a good argument to make that it might be helpful for GL's existing user base to know about the tennis racket situation in those centers. Um, and it's a bit nuanced because obviously it's something that they operationally haven't required so far. Maybe they're getting away with it because it's on the website somewhere else, or maybe it's the receptionist that's, you know, or maybe the first session you turn up and figure it out. Um, and, and there could be a good argument for, you know, user experience or something else. 
that is about maybe that data is useful. And that's the, 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 nu the nuance of that discussion. I think Stephen's point is that you're not going to get that on day one just by saying you're missing some fields. There needs to be a bit of a kind of interactive discussion about why it is that certain fields are useful, not just because it's in the contract, because it's in crucially GLL's best interest to invest the time in, in, in filling that out across the... Well, across I think the we can, you know, reassurance to Stephen, we can take that message into those conversations with the brokers, you know, when, when we ask them what, what they think about data quality, to be mindful that whatever they tell us, we, we haven't got a magic button or anything to, to kind of make that appear. Uh, but we can we can have those conversations. Um, super mindful of time. I think that's been really, really helpful. Um, I did have one, there were a couple of things, but I don't know if we're getting a chance. So um, yeah, clearly another mishap on my slides there. Um, Siv is still Siv still around. We had we have some. Yep, still around. Do you want to mention the 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 example an example of a change to the facility types list because we have I know you mentioned it uh, on Slack uh, for, for a future discussion. But uh, if you just want to introduce the the, the topic. Yeah, we'll do. Uh, so this is just saying that. Um, uh, currently, there is a facility type two activity um, mappings list that is managed um, by this group, I think, or the uh, Open Active in general. Um, and it's um, the, the issue I've raised is about formally defining that mapping as a strict equivalence. Um, just for uh, using that mapping in for facility use feeds. Well, there, there are two reasons really. Facility use feeds that um, currently don't provide a facility type. And the, the second use is for providing suggestions of, you know, you can foresee a, a front end that wants to provide suggestions of sessions for someone booking a facility. So in order to know what that facility type uh, maps to in, in the session sense. Um, so yeah, that, that's, that's what the, the, the issue is about, the, the nature okay. of that equivalent. So um, that's a, a mapping of facility types and activities um, to kind of enable, enable better search um, and also to solve the problem where some of our older feeds don't include the facility type uh, when perhaps they should. So uh, we will have a discussion about that further on. I had the question, which I'll raise, but I won't, I won't, we won't discuss now, oops, uh, which was, should the facility type list be managed in a way similar to the open active list is becoming, uh, moving towards that. So that's my thoughts. Uh, my question rather but for discussion at a later date um thank you very much everyone i meant to do the uh, the register earlier but uh, i'll just say we had andrew and myself chris and tim from the odi uh nick and siv from imen uh, Stephen from gll uh andy gordon from gladstone and debbie from everyone active so thank you all for joining and some some good conversation there, some useful stuff for me to follow up on. So speak to you all soon. Cheers. Yes. Thanks everyone. Thanks. Bye bye. Thanks all. Bye now.